Low turnout and plummeting support for President Biden among young voters could be a warning sign for Democrats in 2022 and beyond. According to new data from the California recall election, as well as other recent surveys analyzed by NBCLX, turnout among voters aged 18 to 29 fell by almost half for California's September recall compared to the 2020 presidential election. And while Gen Zers were more likely to vote for Biden at the ballot box in 2020, former President Trump was able to grab nearly four in 10 among that group, which is not nothing. They're also, a, they're also exhibiting a massive drop off in support for President Biden compared to other age groups. According to an October poll from Morning Consult and Politico, 43% of Gen Z voters said they approve of President Biden's job performance compared to 51% of millennials, 46% of Gen Xers, and 45% of baby boomers. That represents a whopping 20 point drop in approval from a June survey among our youngest voters. Carolyn DeWitt, president and executive director of the nonpartisan advocacy group Rock the Vote, told NBCLX, quote, Gen Z cares very deeply about these issues. They're starting to reach this tipping point of no turning back, and they're the ones who are inheriting these messes. They want bold action on them, and they want that fast. That's not to say young voters aren't politically engaged. The most recent Harvard Youth Poll found 36 percent of Americans under 30 said they're politically active compared to 24 percent after President Obama's first election in 2008. Uh, Robbie, as the young buck around here, uh, <laughs> what's your take and what do you think all this means for 2022? What, what's up with the kids today? Uh, the kids these well, let me get as a as a kid, you know, hello, fellow kids <laughs> dot uh, uh, gif. Are you are you a Gen Z or Robbie? What, what no, generation I'm not a Gen Z or I'm not even I'm right in the middle of millennial. Um, oh, okay. But my you know, my age is my uh, my generation is, is getting older. Um, relying on the the youth vote is not ever a winning strategy. So I think being clear eyed about the fact that, you know, the, I mean, the Biden can't get as many of these people to the polls as he would like uh, is probably a good thing. Um, you have to speak to other voters. You even even I think President Obama, who is like popularly the best example of channeling the youth you support. I think probably the major comp, comp, uh, um, contribution of very young people to the Obama uh, victory was campaigning for him, was doing, you know, get out the vote drives, those kinds of, uh, you know, door knocking stuff. Um, it was way more about and, and the energy and kind of giving him a, uh, uh, allowing him to to have a sort of cultural uh, m m m appeal uh, to sort of elite popular culture that that the the youth opinion matters for that so much. Mm -hmm. So the fa so if, if Biden does not is not able to marshal that because he's not popular among young people, that might be the the more damaging aspect of it. Right. What's interesting is he's actually, according to this morning consult and political poll, is he's actually doing better amongst millennials than any of the groups. So Gen Z didn't, you know, they like him the least, but millennials actually like him the most compared to Gen Xers and baby boomers who like him, you know, kind of moderately in between in between those two. I think that's really interesting. I mean, I, I kind of think that the younger voters are more radical. Um, I think that's just the way it's always been. Generation after generation, the young voters tend to be really radical. So Gen Zers, I would think, really don't approve of the administration. They don't think it's radical enough. I don't know if that's the right, uh, you know, I don't know if you should cater to that base <laughs> necessarily. So, I, I mean, Ryan, what do you think? Do you think they're more radical? Do you think they should be trying to grab more of them? Or what I do mean, you think is the best path forward here? I, I mean, I, th I think they, they expect a lot from Democrats. They expect them to deliver on what they campaigned on. Uh, you know, so far they haven't. I do think if Democrats had, uh, in, in, instead of having, you know, July, August focused on the Af Afghanistan, you know, media spasm about the way the withdrawal was carried out, if instead they had been, they had passed their reconciliation package by then and then were able to talk about all of the climate investments that they're making and all, all of the social spending that they're, going to, that they're doing to kind of transform the, the social compact, spend the summer and fall talking about that, you would, I think, see Joe Biden at a much higher approval rating across the board, not just in uh, not, you know, not just among young people, but in in the vacuum, you know, you had a lot of the anger about uh, about COVID and the handling of COVID kind of creep into that creep into that right. into that space. And I wonder if if Virginia uh, would have would have gone would, if California would have gone the way Virginia did, 
if Republicans had managed to put up a Glenn Young, you know, if, if Glenn Young can lived in Los Angeles instead of living in McLean, and he was the guy, you know, who ran a who ran a well-funded campaign during the recall, um, rather than what was his name, Larry Elder. Larry Elder. Uh, Larry Elder. Yeah. If, yeah. And, and, I. I, I yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think that had California actually put up, had the Republican Party of California put up an actual candidate that people could take seriously, that Democrats could feel comfortable voting for, probably would have seen a very different outcome. A lot of this, I think, according to these polls, showing that there was just a low voter turnout in that young group for Gavin Newsom, from, you know, anecdotally, just from talking to people around me, a lot of them did not like Gavin Newsom, but they also didn't want to necessarily kick him out of office and replace him with Larry Elder, a Republican. So a lot of them stayed home and just chose not to vote and just kind of said, let the cards fall where they where they may uh, for Gavin Newsom. And if he gets kicked out of office, he does. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. A lot of people were just really sort of like, you know, indifferent to the whole entire thing. Um, but, uh, but I do agree with you, Ryan. I think that had there have been more movement on the reconciliation and infrastructure package. Gen Z would probably particularly get really motivated by the climate stuff. Uh, millenni- I, I don't know if they care as much about uh, spending for child care and whatnot. I think Gen Z is still a bit young. But I do think that they are more in that uh, climate, defund the police. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're into these more, those real more, what seem more radical, right, uh, to people, to more moderates. But the millennials, maybe the reason why they're feeling more um, approval for Biden compared to the other groups is because millennials, I think Robbie's a millennial right there. I, Je, uh, Ryan and I are just right at the border of. Yeah, you of, guys uh, are millennials. So, I mean, I don't want to no, call Gen out Xers. ages here, but I think you're kind millennial. Of a Gen you're millennial Gen Xers. In spirit, I'm a Gen Xer too. Yeah. Yeah. We're Gen Xers. <laughs> Everybody likes Gen Xers. Uh, millennials hate boomers, and also many millennials don't like Gen Z very much. Nobody cares but about Gen Xers. Well, yeah. and Gen Xers are at the age now, so my older siblings are firmly Gen X. That's why I'm Gen X, because I'm right at that border. Mm-hmm. I'm in that year. I was born in 80, where it's like r- they call us exennials. But because my older, because I'm the youngest, my siblings were Gen Xers, and so I took on more Gen X um, culture. But my siblings are now having grandchildren. You know, they're at that age, in their for- late 40s and 50s. So they're, they don't care as much about... Um, I think a lot of the stuff that's in these packages, like the child care, you know, uh, but okay. but millennials are in that age group. Like you said, Robbie, you know, you're in your 30s now. You guys are popping out the kids. You want some <laughs> child care. It's time to do that. I, Josh Hawley would be pretty uh, <laughs> upset at me for all the not having kids and video games uh, I'm, I'm into these days. But uh, but it, one other thing I wanted to point out, it's it's uh, it's interesting. You know, we're talking about the political, the relevance of young people's political attitudes. We are at a moment in time where we are ruled, where we are governed by like the oldest government in terms of the actual political figures, Joe Biden, very old, Donald Trump, very old, um, the, Pelosi. The, the, the Pelosi. Pelosi, Pelosi, ancient. Yeah. Uh, even the, so, some of the leading kind of intellectual figures, you had Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, also old people. Even Dr. Fauci, who's leading our pandemic response, old. <laughs> yes, that too. Right. There's a, it, it's 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 fat. It's like a, a what is the word gerontocracy or something? Well, yeah, is the I word mean, for it? it's Bernie, it's, Bernie, Biden, Pelosi. They were all born early 1940s. It's crazy. Like, and it a, a policy area where it it shows up a lot that I'm paying attention to because I very concentrated on uh, social media issues these days. Uh, the the level of ignorance about technical uh, questions, about big tech, about social media, about tech companies that comes up again and again at hearings or when government bureaucrats discuss it is uh, it, it is a symptom of the, of the fact of how old the people in our government are. And, uh, and that, so that it would be an area where I, I wish somehow Gen Z could have, uh, or millennials, anyone could have some influence to get some more young people elected on issues like that, it would do a lot of good because the people, our people in government just do not understand them at all and are incapable of understanding it because they're old. I'm sorry. No, that's mean. It's true. We're not being ageist. We I promise. guess we're being a little ageist. I'm being a little ageist. But <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Right. <laughs> anyway, we will have more rising right after this.